Okay, members, you're very welcome to the uh, Committee of Executive Office meeting today, uh, the first one of September after our uh, break from meetings in August. Everybody's very welcome. Um, today's business will include a written departmental briefing on the shared future funding, um, and that has been presented to members, and we can take a look at that and uh, then after that, we will move into our strategic planning session to look at the priorities for the year ahead. So um, I'd like to maybe just take apologies at this stage. And we've received apologies from George Robinson and Pat Sheehan. And we're just waiting. Christopher normally joins us in the room. Uh, he's normally a few minutes late. So um, we'll move on, though. Um, First item is item two, is the draft minutes uh, from the meeting that was held on the 29th of July, and that's at page four of the meeting pack. Uh, are members content that the minutes are a true reflection of the proceedings? Yeah. Okay, so we'll have them signed then. Uh, matters arising, on page nine of your meeting pack, um, there's a response from the department following the Brexit briefing that we got on the 29th of July. Um, there was an oral evidence session specifically on common frameworks uh, and it will be added to the forward work programme on the 7th of October. A written briefing on the development of the 2021-2027 Peace Plus programme is attached at Annex A. Now, the committee will consider EU funding briefings when we come to the strategic planning session um, and uh, when TEO, TEO officials will be coming to brief us as part of that, um, we might are we, we might get them a, com a company from DOF officials or are we asking permission? Just then that it would probably be sensible to ask for DOF officials to accompany them as they have the lead in EU funding programmes so that we can get the full round of questions mm. answered. Now, I know that um, Pat is not present here today but I think Pat had asked for that item to be updated and it's in there as the annex. So maybe just in the absence of Pat, we maybe just assume if he was here, he probably would have asked for those finance officials to come along just to give a briefing on that. And then maybe if Pat thinks that's what he doesn't want, then we it's could... It's on Peace Plus. And yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Definitely. just to get that update from them, OK. Um, on page 14 of the meeting pack, then, there's a response from the Equality Commission uh, regarding the disability action plans. Um, during that committee meeting that we had on the 29th of July, uh, whenever we considered the Equality Commission's annual report and accounts for the year up to March 2020, we did find out that 19 public authorities did not have current disability action plans. There are still a number of plans outstanding, uh, and the Equality Commission is, we understand, taking steps to ensure that the plans are developed. Um, but we might want to ask the committee uh, or we might get ourselves as a committee to ask for an update of the position at the end of December. Yeah. Would members be happy if we seek that update at the end of the year just to make sure that those plans have been developed? Yes. And if we could yeah. have a list of, mm -hmm. you know, who Because we have the five and yeah. 19 are now yeah. in the process, mm -hmm. and that's still only considerable number left. Harder, yeah. Um, on page three of the table pack. Sorry, sorry, yes. Chair, but just to say to you, like it's you know when you look at Apex Housing Association, and if they if they don't have such a plan in place, given you know the customers or tenants at the beginning, sure, it's quite concerning. Do you get Just take members can take their ease for a moment just to move. Sorry if you Yeah. Do you want to just suspend? Yeah, we'll suspend for a minute just to get this sorted. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30.
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. Okay. okay, thank you very much members, that's some of the technology sorted out there, so we're back again. Um, and Martina, I think you were just coming <coughs> there on the um, no, the, the Yeah, the disability action plans, you know, when you look at the list that's in front of us, and there's a number of them that have indicated that a current disability action plan is now in place. However, when you look at the list of those that still don't have uh, or haven't indicated that a current disability action plan in place, I think that's quite alarming. Uh, you know, the Commissioner for Older People, which is surprising. Uh, Apex Housing Association, again, equally surprising. So we should uh, we should definitely get an update yeah, as to where those... To yeah, we want to find out where sure, they are at. Happening. And of course, for some of those, it might just be procedural. Of course, they that's may not so have we just, them, just but we need to know. We need but to it's, be they've indicated sure here the that. ones they know that have been mm -hmm. uh, submitted but that are procedural, and they're not indicating that they are. Okay. Um, right, item three then on the table pack that was there is a response from the department providing information requested by ourselves on the victims' payment scheme following the briefing session with officials that we had on the 8th of July. Remember, the officials will be attending the meeting on the 23rd of September um, to provide us with an update on the scheme and we will um, be discussing it as well later in the strategic planning session. Our members are content just to note the letter at the minute and then we'll pick it up later or if there's any other further points of clarification at the meeting with them on the 23rd. Yep. Okay. okay, that moves us then to item four which is the shared future funding. And it's a, a departmental written briefing. Um, it's at page 18 of the meeting pack. Um, it was agreed at our meeting on the 27th of May that we would request a written briefing from the department on the shared future funding. Now, there is a briefing paper there, and it highlights some of the key points, including the current funding positions, the programmes that are currently funded by the shared future funding, and the likely impact at the end of the funding and what it will be. The um, copy of the full departmental written briefing can be found at page 21 of the meeting pack. Now, the main issue, I suppose, from this is it's highlighting a number of key programmes that have been delivered over a five-year period that were funded uh, under Fresh Start monies, which uh, will run out in March of 2021. Certainly, I suppose, just from the perspective of myself, that sort of just says this what's going to happen because there are programs, for example, that are taking place. Um, you have good relations funding, you've T Buck camps, you've got um, urban neighbor neighborhoods. There's just a mm -hmm. huge amount of programs that are being funded, uh, and at this stage, the funding uh, is due to um, stop. Can I suggest that we write? To the department and ask what steps they're taking to secure funding for those programs going forward or which programs they feel maybe would be ceasing or stopping and maybe get some information about the processes for winding those programs up would that be of use martina yeah i think it would be useful it would also be helpful to uh, to ask the department if they're going to include it in the in this resource in their departmental budget rounds for, for next time round and I think we should also try to ascertain uh, the status of the departmental planning uh, and ask you know, what are the lessons have been learnt over the five years. We know we raised some concerns for instance as to where there were gaps either regionally or, or sectorally and um, just to ask the officials to, to highlight uh, the date that these investments are going to perhaps be sought and what will be the consequence of the gap because you're going to have a number of organizations out there 
who are anticipating that this is going to continue on. Mm -hmm. It ends, I think, next year, mm -hmm. March of next year, and we can't just allow this to go over a cliff. There's enough going over a cliff at the moment, and never mind uh, this going over the cliff with them. And I think the funding is key to it because the funding is actually being sourced from the British government, as I understand yeah. it, a certain yeah, from percentage the of it from Fresh Start. Fresh start. So that's not, it's not that there's a natural Five funding years, stream yeah. within yeah. the executive <coughs> at the minute to replace no, that, no, but no. a lot of work there that may cease. So if we could get any, any other comments on that funding? So we can um, seek that information and, and see maybe if we yeah. can get... We're going to ask that as a written briefing or...? Well, it <coughs> might be an idea if, if you want to bring officials in for an oral evidence session and sort of around the issues that you've raised, um, Martina, we could ask them to, to base their briefing, oral yeah. briefing on that and come prepared to answer the questions that, that you have outlined. And maybe you might want to consider that when you look at the strategic plan and mm -hmm. going forward and what mm -hmm. departmental um, mm -hmm. you know, officials we're bringing in yeah. in front of them. So, because okay. we might have a quite packed agenda given what's coming down the track of us with Brexit and everything else. Okay, well, in the first instance, then we'll write to the department yeah. and, and get the written information. Okay. Any other comments on that? No. Nope. Right then, um, we can move on then to <clears throat> item five the forward work programme. Um, which is at page 30 of the meeting pack. Um, the Community Relations Council um, is due to provide a briefing on the 23rd of September. However, we've been informed that there has been a bereavement suffered mm -hmm. by somebody that would want to come and actually present to us, and there's been a request that that could be rescheduled to a date in October. Would members be happy enough for us to reschedule that? Of course. Mm, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> However, that then leaves us a gap on the, on the 23rd. The junior ministers were due um, to give us an update on Brexit on the 30th of September. Uh, junior Minister Lyons is no longer available on that date, but can we maybe suggest them that they could come forward and do that on the 23rd, uh, since we have that space now with delaying yeah. the other? If their diary is permitted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, then in that case, then are members content to note the forward work programme? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, uh, move on to item six then, which is correspondence. Uh, there are eight items of correspondence in the meeting pack. I draw attention to a few of them. Uh, item 6.1, which is in page 36, is a response from the junior ministers apologising to the committee for the lateness of papers and committing to the timely provision of papers in the future. Members content to note that? Mm -hmm. I'd say the date will change in that one. It will be issued again in the future, no doubt, but we'll, we'll keep playing the game. No, uh, so facetious. <laughs> no, no, no. Item 6.2 on page 37 is correspondence from the Executive Office uh, providing a copy of the agenda of the Joint Ministerial Committee meeting which was held on the 3rd of September just last week. The communique issued following the meeting is at page 31. The Department has indicated that it will provide a written update on the key points made by the Ministers at the meeting. Um, we haven't received that from them yet. Would a member's agreement we'll write off and ask for that, if that's possible? Okay. Um, so. Item 6.5 on page 42 is a request from Fermanagh and Oma District Council to meet with the committee to discuss issues from Brexit implications for their district council area. Um, again, sorry to be using this line a lot, but we're going to be discussing Brexit as part of the strategic planning, and it might involve how we'd, we'd reach out to those councils. So, councils and number councils. Yeah, yeah. So we maybe can we just hold off on that yeah. request yeah. until we consider it as part of the, that later? Yeah. Uh, although it is, they are a border region, so yeah. probably <clears throat> will be particularly. Absolutely. That, yep. well, there's all, there's, I I there's five I've, that we might yeah. actually, so but we might say later to work with the five of them rather than. Chair, can I mm -hmm. go back just to, I think it's 6.4, it's before that, the letter from the um, APG on women and yep. security. Okay. I just know that they had, because I sit on that on <coughs> APG, mm -hmm. and I noticed that they've, they've mentioned um, presenting to. to to the, get the executive officials to present to the ABG, but I thought that they were going to ask to brief the committee. Okay. You know, the, the, we have a report, they've drawn up a report on uh, the impact of COVID and, on, on women particularly and the fact that it disproportionately affects 
women and the, the implications for work and for childcare and the likelihood that more women would be left redundant and all of that. I thought that they were going to ask to present to this committee, but they, they haven't. No, we haven't received no. anything. That's no. the only Right, okay, maybe we can tie in with them again to see because it might be worth... It's really just giving us information to note yeah. rather than actually ask. Yeah, well, they've something got a report with recommendations, which I you know yep. probably mm -hmm. they wouldn't be totally endorsed, but um, there's some things that would be worth looking at. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure, I, I'll, I'll raise that with Paula then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might be just, yeah. So I was thinking it might be the confusion between executive and executive office committee there. Maybe it says further welcome the executive mm. sending officials, but it's like that's nearly a letter that would be sent to. I exactly yeah, rather than us, us, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Not sure, maybe the wires have been crossed there, but sure I'll mm -hmm. tie in with them. Okay. Um, item six point seven and a page ninety is further correspondence from Development Trust NI. The trust had previously written to the committee requesting an opportunity to brief members on their work on community wealth building. Um, it was previously agreed that this briefing uh, would be request would be considered as part of the strategic planning session as there's a couple of other requests there as well. Okay. Are you happy for us to consider it at that, that point in strategic yep. planning? Yep. Okay. Are members content then to note the remaining items of correspondence? Yep. Okay. Um, item seven then, uh, Chairman's business. Maybe just to update members that we met with both First and Deputy First Minister uh, yesterday, both uh, virtually and then in person because the virtually didn't work in the building because of the poor Wi-Fi. Um, so we had to very quickly uh, find ourselves a room in the building um, and we just uh, appraised ourselves of a few issues that the committee had been discussing. There was no uh, vice chairman, there was no major outcome, it was just really a catch up meeting but I think what we had done was we had sort of suggested that that monthly meeting would take place and we'll schedule the dates between uh, now and Christmas in the first instance and then maybe what we can do is put a, an item on the agenda the week before for the committee maybe to give us some views and, and thoughts and things that they would like us to raise and then we can have something to feed back on from that position okay um so members that's the meeting complete we're actually not far from it but uh, than that. <laughs> item eight any other business seriously with, with the no, strategic we're planning. We're the strategic plan and we just did the yep. papers. Uh, any other business then? No. Okay, so the date, time and place of the next meeting is next Wednesday at 2 o'clock in room 30. And on that, the meeting will complete. But you'll be pleased to know, Christopher, you get recorded as being at the meeting. <laughs> Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly.